that's Icelandic for welcome to Iceland. Yeg er hadli. Oh, yeg er delini. And this is twice as good. We're excited to be visiting this amazing island where our culinary base of operations for the day will be at Harpa, which is located in Iceland's capital city, Reykjavik. Harpa is one of Iceland's most iconic man-made landmarks. The distinctive colored glass and steel facade was inspired by the country's basalt landscape. In addition to being home base for the Iceland Symphony Orchestra, the Icelandic Opera, and the Reykjavik Big Band, Harpa often hosts Iceland's annual chef gala. Today, Harpa's executive chef and former Iceland Chef of the Year, Bjarne Gunnar Christensen, is going to show us some fabulous dishes that combine traditional Icelandic fare with cutting edge modern twists. One of the main staples here is seafood. Lamb and dairy are also very important parts of the cuisine. Since Iceland is in the North Atlantic, the climate is too harsh for growing many crops. Preservation by means of pickling, fermentation, drying, and smoking are key to the flavor profile traditionally associated with Icelandic recipes. Other local featured ingredients include crowberries, blueberries, rhubarb, Iceland moss, wild mushrooms, wild thyme, lovage, and dried seaweed. Iceland is a Nordic island nation located in the North Atlantic Ocean off Europe's northeastern coast. The Norse region consists of Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, and Sweden, as well as Greenland, the Faroe Islands, and the Åland Islands. These countries are united by both geography and culture. One of the first questions visitors to Iceland often ask is, how did Iceland and Greenland get their respective names? since Iceland is actually green, while Greenland is largely covered in ice. Common lore is that when war broke out among Norwegian Vikings, one band fled in boats, discovered a green island, and settled it. In order to discourage others from following them, they sent word back that their island was an ice-covered land, but that another island, more distant and larger, was an inhabitable green land. And so the Green Island became Iceland, and the Icy Island became Greenland. Another commonly recounted story is that Eric the Red, a Norwegian who settled in Greenland, named that country Greenland in order to bring more settlers there. The actual history of how the two got their names is more complicated and has to do with both Norse custom and shifting global climates. But one thing is for sure, Iceland is beautifully green and scenic. Iceland is most famous for a variety of awe-inspiring geothermal wonders, including the Blue Lagoon, volcanoes, geysers, hot springs, and lava fields. The term geothermal is a combination of geo, meaning the earth, and thermal, which relates to heat. Geothermal energy, or the heat of the earth, is a result of the underground forces that are also responsible for both geysers and volcanoes. Due to the enormous magma deposits located beneath so much of its surface, Iceland is one of the most volcanically active countries in the world. Magma is hot, molten rock mixed with gases and mineral crystals that collect in chambers beneath the Earth's crust. Magma most often breaks through to the surface when tectonic plates shift or when a volcano erupts. Once it reaches the outside, the molten mixture is known as lava. We will be descending into the magma chamber of Iceland's Þrínungagígur volcano later today. But as well as being a land of fire, Iceland is also a land of ice. Vanajolgut and Snæfellsjökull National parks are home to enormous glaciers that stretch as far as the eye can see. In fact, over 10% of Iceland is covered in glacial ice. We will be looking at some of Iceland's glaciers and other natural wonders today, as well as taking a peek at a puffin colony and touring Freidhammer Greenhouse to sample produce grown using some of the innovative geothermal energy techniques that fuel most of the country's power grid. 
Our first stop is the top floor of Harpa, where we will learn about Icelandic cooking with Chef Marini. Uh, today we have the nice Arctic char. That is a very popular fish in Iceland. Cut the Arctic char for me. And at the same time we can take the vegetables and peel them. How do you smoke the fish? It's an Icelandic tree that's called birch. I have a smell sample of it. It's a very delicate, smoky flavor. Is this a really popular dish here? I think uh, people like it because it has the freshness of the vegetables, smokiness from the fish, and a little bit fatty from the cheese. A little bit of celery, it's very he healthy also. If we can put a little bit squeeze of a lemon, a little bit of uh, chilies. It's always nice to have something sweet, something strong, and something sour. We have a nice uh, vinegar. It will give it a little bit sour. And then, of course, we have a nice Italian olive oil, a little bit of salted pepper. I have here the Icelandic seaweed. Put it in a blender. This is the seaweed powder. So mix it, toss it a little bit. So now I was thinking if we can do a two plates and then we can put a little bit of the cucumbers. This is the Icelandic curd cheese. Put small dots of this one. Here we have the dill and a little bit of uh, coriander. If you can pick a few leaves and put on top for decoration. Now we're getting ready with this nice dish. So this is like a seaweed ash. And it has a salty flavor, so we don't have to season it more. Iceland is one of the most volcanic countries on the planet. The island has 30 active systems, 13 of which have erupted since the first settlement in 874 AD. In 2010, the volcano Eyjafjallajökull Yogurt erupted with such force, the resulting ash cloud halted global air travel for several days. Iceland straddles a section of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, a divergent tectonic plate boundary. The outermost shell of the planet is known as the lithosphere, which is made up of huge sections called tectonic plates. A good way to imagine it is to think of Earth as a large globe covered in a layer of mosaic tile. Most of the time, these plates are stable, but under certain circumstances, they can shift. When this happens, magma is released, causing volcanoes to erupt. Iceland sits atop a geothermal hotspot as well as the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, creating the perfect conditions for volcanic activity. Today, we'll be descending into Iceland's Trinungagigu volcano. Our journey begins at the Blue Mountains Country Park, Blaufjot, where we're being joined by volcano expert, Dr. Arman Holskulsson, for the two-mile hike up to the Trinungagigu volcano crater. Its name? Uh, the name comes from three, three Nuka Gigur. Three is three, Nukur is peak, and Gigur is a crater. Why are there so many different colors in the rocks and what are they made of? If we look over here, we see red and bluish color. The bluish color is from iron that is not rusted, but then the reddish color comes from iron that is rusted. The yellow colors are usually related to sulfur. What is the difference between magma and lava? Magma and lava. Magma is where it's inside the earth, and once it comes on the surface, we call it lava. How big is this volcano? This actually would be classified as a small volcano, although the hole we are in is very big, and we could put in the Statue of Liberty here with, with an ease. When is the last time this volcano erupted? This particular volcano, 4,500 years, but within this volcanic system, there are only about 900 years since the last eruption was here. Are any of the active volcanoes in Iceland likely to erupt anytime soon? Yes, they are. Basically, in Iceland, the frequency of uh, volcanic eruptions is about 2.3 years between the eruptions. How much warning do people get before a volcano erupts? 
It depends on, on the volcanoes. One volcano that we have, like Hekla, tells us half an hour before, but then it goes off. Other volcanoes start rumbling many years before this, they erupt. But the precise moment of the eruption is always going to be a very, very short notice. The best known light effect in Iceland is the Aurora Borealis, or Northern Lights, which are often visible in the night sky during the winter months in Iceland. Mother Nature's most amazing light show, this phenomenon is actually the result of the collision of gas particles from the Earth's atmosphere with charged particles released from the Sun's atmosphere. When charged particles from the Sun strike atoms in Earth's atmosphere, they cause electrons in the atoms to move to a higher energy state. When the electrons drop back into a lower energy state, they release a photon, light. This process creates the beautiful aurora, or northern lights. So girls, for next this, we're going to have an Icelandic lamb burgers. It's a good idea when you're working with raw meat to have the gloves, so you have it spot on there. This is the lamb? Yeah, this is just minced lamb filler. It's going to be very juicy. This is uh, like anise, it's anti licka and it's have a little bit licorice flavor. So if you can put a little bit of the seasoning, it's a wild thyme and the anti licka This is an egg yolk to bind it a little bit. Put a little bit of breadcrumbs in a nice texture to it. Are we doing a little bit seasoning, salt and pepper? So now because we have the gloves on, you can mix it by hand. And if we can make a nice small little burgers. Is this bread on you? Yeah. So you can add this onion to it, to the mix. So now you can take a small ball. Yeah, this is the perfect size. Well, see, make the burgers. Maybe we can cut a little bit of the tomatoes. This, this is like an Icelandic uh, tomato grown in the greenhouses. What kind of bread is that? This is a homemade bun, but of course you can buy your own. Instead of using pickles, we're just using, using fresh cucumber. I will just heat up the pan a little bit. You see, it's going to change the color a little bit. Now we can prepare the buns. Now we have to put fresh yogurt on the buns. This is just the Icelandic lettuce grown in the greenhouses. Are they almost done? They need like two minutes each side. Maybe you can use the time to put on top of this one and put a little bit of the fresh pickles underneath. I think it's just one per piece. Then we put each on one side. Oh, wow. These are such nice portions. Are we putting a little bit of the yogurt on top also? And so we just put it like this? Yes, and then we will keep the shape. Wow, these are so pretty. Thank you, great job, girls. The recorded history of Iceland begins with the arrival in the late 9th century of Viking explorers, who came predominantly from Norway and the British Isles. The land was quickly settled, and not long after, the Viking chieftains established a form of governance known as the Althingi. See around here where the Vikings had the parliament. They started here 930. No single place epitomizes the history of Iceland better than Thingvallir. Translated, Thingvallir literally means Parliament Plains. It was here that the Althingi General Assembly, the oldest existing parliament in the world, first met in 930 AD and continued to convene until 1798. It sits in a rift valley caused by the separation of two tectonic plates along the Alamanageu Fault and serves as a breathtaking visual representation of continental drift. Glaciers and ice caps cover just over 10% of the total land area of Iceland. An ice cap is a mass of glacial ice that covers a highland area and feeds outlet glaciers. The largest ice cap in the country is Vatnajökull. A glacier is a persistent body of dense ice that is constantly moving under its own weight. It forms where the accumulation of snow exceeds its ablation over many years, often centuries. <laughs> Now we're gonna try to make a local favorite of both the kids and the workers. This is where you use your leftovers. You have leftovers of boiled potatoes, 
leftover of uh, boiled fish. We have this famous Icelandic lava bread. It's wow. baked uh, wow. in the ground next to the volcanoes and geysers. How exactly do they cook the bread? It's very popular because we are using the energy from the earth to bake the bread. We bake it for 100 degrees over 24 hours. Wow, that's so cool. So maybe if you can break a small crumple here so we can use it as a decoration. Can you help me fry up the onions? So what kind of fish are we using today? Uh, we can use haddock or a cod. So now we have fry up the onions so they're getting a little bit clear. Then we can add two spoons of flour. Then you can pour in a little bit of the milk for me. Stir it while it's still cold because the flour will go to lumps if we don't stir it. Now we have to add the potato and the fish. Now the sauce is starting to thicken also. So these potatoes are already boiled? Yeah, it's already boiled fish, so maybe we put... And then we have the nice boiled, already boiled fish. So now we we'll let it heat a little bit. Now we can use the time to season it. Of course, a little salt. And this is this that needs a lot of black pepper. This is the key factor in the dish because we have so mild ingredients. And then we need to squeeze the potatoes a little bit so they'll mess. So this dish is get, just getting ready. So then we scoop, and then if you can put a little bit of the breadcrumbs on top, give a very crunchy and good flavor. And because we are so fancy, we can decorate with the chive flowers. They have a little bit of onion flavor in it. We can put nice herbs also. It's a local favorite, so you made it very nice. It looks good. Waterfall is one of the most beautiful natural attractions in Iceland. The waterfall flows down a wide, curved, three-step staircase before plunging abruptly in two stages. One of the most amazing aspects about these falls is the optical illusion they create. As you approach, the edge is obscured from view, so it looks as if the river simply vanishes into thin air. Six miles south of Goodfoss is the home of some of Iceland's most famous geysers. In fact, the name geyser itself is derived from the Icelandic verb yosa, which means to gush. Here in the Heikataler Valley, the two largest geysers are Strokur and Geyser. Geyser was the first periodically sprouting hot spring described in a printed source. Its first eruption was thought to have occurred over 10,000 years ago. Today, Strokur erupts much more often than Geyser. Strokur erupts every 6 to 10 minutes. The usual height is 50 to 65 feet, although its eruptions can sometimes reach 130 feet. The Blue Lagoon a Geothermal Spa, located in a lava field in Grindavik on the Reykjanes Peninsula, is one of the most visited destinations in Iceland. The geothermal water here originates 2,000 meters below the surface, where fresh water and salt water from the sea combine at extreme temperatures. This water is harnessed via drilling holes at a nearby geothermal power plant Fart singing to create electricity and hot water for nearby communities. On its way to the surface, the water picks up silica and minerals and emerges at a temperature that's usually between 98 and 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we're gonna end with a bang. We're gonna make a nice uh, lava cake. We make a caramel and put the sesame seed in. We put egg whites, that's three eggs, but we have separated it. So then we put the flour, regular sugar. You can start to put cream. Do we want to have a skir also? Skir is an Icelandic cultured dairy product. It has the consistency of strained yogurt, but a much milder flavor. Skir is a high protein, but low fat product. Skir has been Iceland's signature food for nearly a thousand years, dating back to the 9th century. Skir was favored by Vikings, who evidence suggests brought it along on their journeys. Back then, skir was a byproduct of the acid whey, which they used to preserve meat and fish. The consistency evolved from cheese-like to silky and spoonable, as it gained favor as a standalone product. We start to whisk this a little bit. And we carry on with the sponge. So we put the uh, one spoon of baking powder. But now we have made the, the dough for the sponge. We need to sieve it because we oh, want to put okay. it in like a cream whipper. 
sieve it a little bit so all the liquid will go down and there's no going to be no lumps. Then we put it in like this because we want to have the airy texture of this. Uh, it's the same as they use uh, in a coffee shop when they're doing whipped cream. Now wow. we cook it for 40 seconds in the microwave. Put it in. Is it ready? It's ready, we already baked. Oh, wow. So I will whip up the cream if you cut a few berries for decoration. But maybe if you can help me add a little bit of the icing sugar. I think we have like a two big spoons. So this is like powdered sugar, kind of. Yeah, because the Icelandic skir doesn't have any sugar. Now we can add the uh, skir. Now we have to be like artists. We break up the lava because we want to have it like the Icelandic landscape. And then if we can put a little bit of freeze-dried berries also. What type of berry is that? It's blueberries and uh, raspberries. It does look like Icelandic lava. Yes, I'm it seeing does. the Icelandic landscape there. Here we have a little bit of uh, strawberry juice and oh, rhubarb it? juice. It's just the uh, fruit that is in season now. A little bit cream with the berries and lava. And to have fresh flavor of the fruit and the sesame seed, this, so it's... Mm, this is so delicious. Yes, I love it. You can really taste all the flavors. With a short growing season and limited arable land, Iceland combines advances in geothermal technology and 21st century farming techniques to produce the fresh fruits and vegetables that are more easily grown in more temperate climates. And nowhere is that more evident than here at Freedhammer Greenhouse. Why are greenhouses so important in Iceland? In Iceland we don't have a very warm climate, so it's too cold outside to grow some vegetables. So we have greenhouses to grow tomatoes, cucumbers and stuff, and then we can grow all year round. Do you use pesticides in the greenhouse? No, we are not needing any pesticides here because we are using the nature's way. So in here we have some bugs that like to eat from our plants. So we are actually using other bugs that are natural enemies to these insects and they control them by eating them. So when there's a balance between good insects and bad insects, then we don't need to spray them with any pesticides. What kind of irrigation system do you use here? We irrigate by using a drip system, so it's all automatic. Computers help me a lot here. How many varieties of tomatoes do you grow here? At the moment we have three varieties, so you can see them here in the basket. These are what we call normal round tomatoes, they are about 100 grams. We have big plum tomatoes, and then we have these cherry tomatoes that are called piccolo. Can you tell us about the importance of bees in a greenhouse? The bees are super important because they are pollinating our flowers so that we will have a good harvest. One bumblebee can visit up to 2,000 flowers wow. every day. So you have heard the term busy as a bee? Yeah. Yes, they are really yes. busy. How does geothermal energy power the greenhouse? We take the hot water into the greenhouse uh, straight from the hot spring and then it's almost boiling and it's circulating in all these white pipes that you see around us oh. here in the greenhouse and it heats up the house but also we don't have that much sun in Iceland so you can see that we have some lamps and they are lit actually 17 hours per day and in Iceland we make electricity by using the steam from the hot water and also by using uh, the waterfalls and both by running turbines we get this um, sustainable energy. Monday, literally Puffin Island in Icelandic, is a small, uninhabited island off the western coast of Reykjavik. Lente serves as a haven for several species of seabirds, including Atlantic puffins. Puffins build their nests in rocky crevices or in burrows in the soil along coastal cliffs or offshore islands. In the air, puffins beat their wings at a frantic pace, up to 400 times per minute. Puffins have short wings that are adapted for swimming. Diving is how they catch the majority of their food. Some say that they are able to fly underwater. Iceland is stunningly beautiful. We want to express our thanks to everyone at Harpa, and especially to Chef Bjarni for sharing his delicious Icelandic recipes. 
preserving the natural beauty of this unique place for future generations while leveraging cutting-edge technologies isn't just good, it's twice as good! Twice as Good with Hadley and Delaney is brought to you by Mila. Emma Besser, forever better. Mila. And by Cuties. Cute, you can eat. Cuties. Kitchen Works. Wherever we go, that's where the party's at. Kitchen Works. <laughs>